to another episode of In the Garden. I'm horticulturist Greg Lusk and we're here at the Amarillo Botanical Gardens. Today we're just going to walk through the gardens and look at what we've done and talk about some things we've already highlighted on videos and see where those uh, plants and the gardens are at right now. Here we're at this shade garden and you can see it's coming along nicely. We planted it a couple weeks ago. We fertilized when we planted but we're going to fertilize again right away. We've got some nice fern here in the back some uh, dragon wing begonias which are fantastic begonias for us they take some sun and uh, bloom really well they grow nice and uh, just a great choice impatience are always a great choice of the garden if you keep them moist and then to set it off we have this lycissima uh, goldilocks right here in the front so that gives a nice border to it so here we are at the butterfly garden uh, it's one of the favorite gardens here at the Botanical Gardens because it's just lively with all the butterflies. It's a little early for butterflies. We have seen a greater number this year than we have in the, the past this early. Right now everything's in their larval stage and it'll be, it'll be booming this summer and this fall when the butterflies are really out. Um, it's just a mix of all kinds of plants. Each plant here has a purpose. It's either for their foliage that the larvae eat or for the nectar that the flowers produce. But if you've been here in the gardens during the late summer and fall, you know that this place is happening with all the butterflies. You can come anytime and see what we've got growing here and, and duplicate it at home. I can point out the things that are easy to grow and really do to attract a lot of butterflies. Butterflies are a great garden uh, entertainer. They, uh, they're easy to attract if you put the right plants. They're easy to attract if you uh, provide the right plants. In this garden, we have a lot of milkweeds. Uh, there's butterfly bush, of course, uh, which we showed you how to plant earlier this year and trim. There's uh, some salvias. There's just a great assortment of plants here. And we'd love for you to come and talk to us about uh, what we have in our butterfly garden and what you could plant in your little corner of the garden. Here we are in another shaded garden. People are always inquiring what they can plant in, in shade. And there's a number of plants that are really great, but none of them are quite as dynamic as this uh, Aquilegia chrysanth. It's a yellow columbine. It's just a great choice. It started blooming uh, in early April and it'll bloom throughout the summer if you cut it back. Um, it's a, a drought and heat tolerant uh, columbine that works great for us. It's just cheerful. You can see it blooms well and it's just a great choice. So here we are. We're going to talk about a shrub for a change. Uh, this is elderberry uh, black lace. It's a beautiful shrub. It's a large growing shrub. It's got this beautiful dark uh, lacy foliage. It blooms at this time of the year with these umbels uh, kind of light pink flowers. It produces some fruit, not a lot of fruit. Uh, for an elderberry but it's just a great it's a deciduous shrub and it likes moisture and it likes a little afternoon shade but this hedge here receives no shade at all and it does great late summer it gets a little bit tired looking but not bad at all for the amount of sun it gets it's just a great cho choice it's elderberry uh, black lace here we are in the Monet garden it's made up of most of perennials it's got a few annuals in it some larkspur that's just really hard to beat that beautiful purple color but it's p pinks and blues right now it seems pre predominantly earlier it was white and purple when the iris were blooming but there's some beautiful hollyhocks here uh, perennial geraniums and some roses blooming and those are always just great choices for us as well um, this garden changes throughout the season it's really fun to watch uh, because we kind of can procession of blooming plants in it that uh, kind of time out differently and throughout the season so it's a great one to visit uh, every couple of weeks throughout the summer so here we are in the joy of nature garden I'm going to show you this beautiful yarrow this one is uh, moonshine uh, it's a little shorter than it usually is but it's uh, just a gorgeous uh, bright yellow with the silvery foliage it's just ferny and beautiful the the uh, pollinators love it it's got some bees on it and little little native bees are buzzing around it's just a great choice it's very hardy it's drought tolerant to a degree and it just is great support uh, performer uh, it'll even give you some decent uh, winter foliage color that kind of helps in the winter um, it's just a great a great choice for us 
Uh, we've got, it comes in several different colors, but this, this yellow just can't be beat. Next, we're gonna talk about this Hesperalo. It's a Texas native, native to the Big Bend area. It's been hybridized and, and bred up to be showier than it is in the wild, uh, in the wild but uh, it's a great choice. It's, the colors are fantastic. It blooms near the entire season. We just seen a hummingbird leave as we walked up. The hummingbirds and the butterflies love it and the bees. Um, the foliage is evergreen. It's very hardy. Even last winter we had some really uh, bad freeze damage on some of our plants and this one just uh, got by with a little bit of browning on the tips. The tips uh, it's are just have a little barb right at the end. They're not even really that, that uh, pokey compared to some of the xeric plants out there. Um, if you'll deadhead it by taking the seed pods off as they form, it'll extend the growing season greatly. But Hesperala is a great choice for our gardens. It helps us to uh, conserve some water. It's great for like a hell strip area or something like that. And uh, it also benefits the hummers as we just saw. Here we're in the meditation garden and this beautiful Jack Manny uh, Clematis behind me. It is a gorgeous plant. It's gorgeous year after year. It's easy to grow once established. Plant the roots in the shade, this, the top in the sun, ample water, but it doesn't require being just soaked all the time. It will perform year after year. It's a long-lived perennial vine that's uh, just a showstopper. It'll bloom throughout the summer, but this initial spring bloom is really something to behold. Thank you for joining us to, in another episode of In the Gardens.